Good morning, this is Mr. Kelly in Kaiser Slaughter. Now, we're talking about graphs of functions, so we're going to start right out with this example here. We got Mr. Brust's morning coffee and his productivity throughout the day. Now, you kids in first period, you know that in the beginning of the day, Mr. Brust's productivity is not really what it could be. But as the day goes on, he gets more and more productive. Now, classroom anxiety. Kids are pretty chill in the morning too, but as the day goes on, uh, that anxiety starts to raise up the more coffee the brush has. Now, there is one point of per perfection right here. This is where kids are anxious enough to be productive, uh, and brush is actually working pretty hard. Unfortunately, that occurs during lunch. So there really isn't a lot of, you know, well, you understand brush. All right, we're going to start with a lot of vocabulary words. We already know uh, what these things are. For the most part, it's review. So what I want you to do is pause the video. Go ahead and pause it, and then uh, fill out these. I'll do the first one for you. The part of the graph with the lowest y value, that's the minimum. So I'm going to put a D right there. And so we're going to go through, fill that list out. Pause the video. Go. Okay, so looking back, hopefully you knew a lot of these different words. Um, so we're going to start with all of the y values that are needed to graph a function. Now, the y values, we know that that is the range. Now, where the y value increases as x increases. Now, what do you think? These aren't trick questions. That is increasing, we're going to say. That's where the function is increasing, y values going up. Where the graph crosses the x-axis, that is called the x-intercept. The part of the graph with the highest y value, that is the maximum and where the y value decreases what do you think decreasing all the x values that are needed to graph the function that is the domain uh, where all the y value let's see where the y value doesn't change well that is constant and the slope how steep a line is changing y over changing x that's what that little delta means uh, counting up and counting over that is the rate of change. So that's another name for slope. We'll be talking about that. And where a graph crosses the y-axis, that is the y-intercept. So hopefully all of those were somewhat review, maybe some new words in there. And we're just going to get really good at looking at a graph and finding all these different things and learning how to communicate and write down uh, what these are. So let's just start getting into it. So as we get into this, I'm going to go through these quickly. So if you need to pause the video or go back, you know, make sure you pause the video, re-listen to it, or ask your teacher if you need some help. But let's get going. The x-intercepts, that's where it crosses the x-axis. So we can see that that occurs at negative 2 and a half about. You know, I'm approximating, but it looks like negative 2 and a half. Uh, what else we got here? 2. So I'm writing it like a point, 2, 0. That means over 2 and up 0. And then 8. So those are our x-intercepts. The maximum value, look at the graph, where's the highest point? The highest point is right here, and so that occurs at x equals 10. So I'm going to write that as a coordinate point, 10, 6. All right, the y-intercept, where it crosses the y-axis. Here's the y-axis. It crosses right here at 0, 2, so I just need to write that as a coordinate point. Now, the minimum, we have minimums here and minimum right here. The minimum is the lowest part of the graph. Here is as low as it gets right here. So that's negative 4, 3. Negative 4, sorry, negative 4, negative 3. And then we have this whole range right here where the minimum is. All right, so when we have to write a range, we're just going to write that as the domain here from 5 to 7. So here's how we can write that, from 5 to 7. We're going to use a compound inequality. Now, if you notice what this says, x has to be greater than or equal to 5, but less than or equal to 7. That means all the way in here we have a minimum. And the reason I have to write that is because we have so many points where it's a minimum right there. So we're just going to write that. The y value, we can write that kind of next to it where y equals negative 3. All right, so we kind of have to write both. We can't write it as a point. The domain... All right, domain are all the x values. So where are the x values? It starts here at negative 4. All right, if I graph this, and it goes, we're talking all the x values. So look, all the, so the x-axis that gets used right here, all these, the graph goes all the way over to this part right here. 
So these are the x values that get used from here to here, negative 4 to 10. So the way we can write that, from negative 4, we write less than or equal to x, or less than or equal to 10. And again, this means that x has to be bigger than negative 4, but x is less than 10. So we're going to use a compound inequality. Now the range, those are the y values. So let's look. The y, where's the lowest y value? We already talked about that. It's right here. And so the y values that get used to graph this, you have to go all the way up to the maximum, all right, which is 6. So we're going from negative 3 all the way up to 6. So the way we can write that is negative 3 up to 6. And it's the same idea, but remember, we're looking at the y values, not the x values. So again, I'm going to use a compound inequality because it tells everybody every value in between from negative 3 all the way up to 6. That's what the range is. So these are two tricky concepts right here. Domain, it's the x-axis that gets used. Okay, what x values do you need to use to graph this? And the range are the y values. So we're looking on the y-axis to graph this graph. We, the lowest value is negative 3, and it goes all the way up to 6. All right, so other things we can talk about. Where is the graph constant? Now, constant, if you go back up here, J, where the Y value doesn't change when X increases. When you talk about when X increases, that means as we're traveling right on this graph, X is increasing. So we're walking to the right, kind of like Mario and Mario Brothers. You're walking down, and uh, where does the graph not change? And you notice that it's between here, 5 and 7. So I'm going to write from 5 to 7 the graph is constant. It's that simple. Decreasing. Okay, decreasing means as x increases, y decreases, going downhill as you go from left to right. Now, students will get confused because they'll go the opposite way and they don't know what's going up and what's going down. We're always traveling to the right. And so this graph decreases from here, you go downhill to here. The rest of it is either staying constant or increasing. So again, we're going to write the domain down. This occurs from negative 1 all the way to 5. So we can kind of write it, if you notice how I write that quickly, from negative 1 to 5, x has to be in between. That's where it's decreasing. Now, it increases. Where does it go uphill? Well, two places, from negative 4 to negative 1. So negative 4 to negative 1. And again, check how I'm writing that out quickly. Compound inequality, x has to be greater than or equal to negative 4, but less than or equal to negative 1. And it also, from 7, it's increasing all the way to 10. So from 7 to 10, that's where the function is increasing. If you notice, as you go right, it's going up. Positive, where is this function positive? That means where is it above the x-axis? All right, so it starts right about here. This is where the function, remember, we're working left to right. So at about negative 2.5, it's positive. It's above the x-axis here. It's not, if it were below the x-axis, it would be negative. But here it's positive, and it goes all the way to 2. So from negative 2.5 all the way to 2, it's positive. Then it's negative, I don't have to worry about it, all the way until 8. Then it becomes positive again because the y values are becoming positive all the way, I have to write this twice, all the way to 10. Okay, so two places from negative 2.5 to 2 and from 8 to 10. That's where it's positive. So I have to list both. Where is the, the graph negative? That means exactly what you think. Where is it below the x axis? So that's from negative 4 to negative 2.5. All right, let's write that down negative 4 to negative 2.5 and also that's this part uh, from 2 all the way to 8 so that's where the graph is negative okay so negative means below the x-axis easy enough now f of 3 this means that x equals 3 so we're gonna go to our graph x equals 3 is right here the graph is right there so what is the y value negative 1 easy enough f of negative 2. So that means the x value is negative 2. What's the y value? It's equal to 1. All right, working backwards, where f of x, where the function is equal to 1. So this is like f of x, remember, is like y. So where is y equal to 1? That's this line right here. 
Oh my goodness, we got three places. So like here, here, and right about there. So I'm going to say, let's see, f of x equals 1. So zooming in here, what do we got? Here's 1, f of x equals 1 right here. So at negative 2, at 1, and at about, I'm going to I'm gonna round it, about 8.5. Okay, so f of x, how do we write that down? f of x equals 1, where did that happen? So it happened at x equals negative 2. Ooh, that was a negative 2. Nice job, Kelly. x equals 1. And over here, at x equals about 8.5. And sometimes you will have to approximate like that. All right? I got the same question down here. So I'm just going to go like that. Look right there. Where does f of x equals 3? All right, well, we got two places where, remember, this is like the y. Where does y equal 3? So at negative 1 and at 9. Negative 1, x equals 9. And where does f of x equal negative 4? Well, look, on this graph, it does not exist. So I'm just going to write, does not exist. Why does it not exist? Well, there's nowhere it equals negative 4. Look, negative 4 is down here. No part of the graph is at negative 4, so I don't have to do that one. The rate of change. We're going to estimate the rate of change when x is 2. So here's x equals 2. It's this line right here. What is the rate of change? Now, from above, we know that the rate of change means the slope. So you've been graphing lines. You know what the slope is, so let's check it out. The slope of this line here, this part right here. So we are doing what? We are going down 1, 2, 3, over 1, 2, 3. It's down 1, over 1, or down 3, over 3. So down 3, over 3. So the slope is about negative 1. Down 1, over 1. All right, so that's the rate of change. Remember, that equals the slope. Estimate the rate of change when x equals 9. Let's try it again. x equals 9 right here. So what's the rate of change there? How do you get to the next point? You have to go up 3 over 1. So up 3 over 1, or it's about 3. Notice here it's negative, here it's positive. So negative means we're decreasing, we're going downhill. Positive means we're increasing, we're going uphill. Okay? So here's what I want you to do. Pause the video. Do this whole graph by yourself. Ooh, that's a lot of work. Pause the video. Go ahead and do example 2. It's just the same thing. Go ahead. Pause the video. Okay, so I've filled out most of it here. You can check your answers. I think the most difficult part, the domain here from negative 7 to 7, the range, that's the y values that get used. So negative 5 and the highest point is 5. So we use all the values in here when we graph it. So y has to be between negative 5 and 5. The function is constant right here. Okay, so that's between 5 and 7. The rate of change when x equals negative 2. Here is x equals negative 2. The rate of change. That's not really a good point there. So I went back to this point and this point, And I used those two. So I need to go up 7 over 2. So that's the rate of change there. Where is the function decreasing? Remember, we're always walking left to right. So we're going up, we're going up, we're going up. Here is one point of decreasing. So we'll say from negative 1 to 1. Let's write that down. And then it goes back up again, and it's decreasing from 5, oh, I'm sorry, from 3, it's the x values, 3 all the way to 7. So those are the areas where it's decreasing. Where is it increasing? Well, it starts here at negative 7, and it goes all the way up. This is where it's nonlinear, okay? Here's where it's linear, so we have to know the difference. We have two parts of the graph, but it increases all the way up here all the way at negative 1, where the y value is 4, it increases. Then it starts again at 1, and it increases all the way until we get to x equals 3. So those are the values where it's increasing. Okay, so let's just remember there are parts where this is nonlinear because it's not a line, and this part right here is linear. But we already know how to do that. We know how to do that from before. All right, last one. Uh, Sully made a quick trip to the local library. On his way home, he stopped for some ice cream. Here's the graph. Okay, where's the graph increasing? All right, so the graph is increasing from 
zero. So t this is time in minutes. We're looking at the distance. All right, so the time has to be, it's not x anymore, but the time has to be between zero and where did it go? It's increasing right here, which is five. Okay, so what is happening at this time? Oh, he's walking to the ice cream shop. So let's write that down. So easy enough there. Uh, explain what the x-intercepts mean. So in this situation, we're going to ask you about using context. And in context means this problem right here. So the x-intercepts are at 0 and 15. It doesn't ask what they are. It says explain what they represent. So here they represent where the distance is 0, the distance from home. So these represent... Ooh, got to represent when Sully is at his house because the distance is zero okay so if the distance is zero that means he's home so the x-intercepts represent when Sully is at his house the y-intercept all right well the y-intercept is what it's the same point right but what does it represent where the distance because that's what the y is is zero so that represents when Sully hadn't left yet to get his ice cream. All right, where's the distance constant? Well, from minutes. What are we going to say here? Uh, constant right here at the top, and it's also constant right here. So we're going to say it is constant from about, we got to find the x value or the t value here, minute 5 all the way to minute 9. So from 5 to 9, and we're talking t. And also from 11 to about 13. So we're writing it with our compound inequality. Estimate the rate of change 10 minutes after Sully started. All right, 10 minutes, this, this shop right here. And we have to estimate it. So I'm going to say the best way to do this, I'm going to get a point right here. So this is the point 924, okay? A little, we're approximating. And then it goes down to this point right here. I am looking, does that look like 12? That looks like 11. So the point 11, 12. So now we can estimate his rate of change. He's going to go down 12, right? He's going from 24 to 12. So he's going down 12 if he goes over how many? 2. So that is negative 6. And we're talking down what? Kilometers. Per minute. He's going six kilometers per minute. That's actually pretty fast. What is he in it? He's in like an airplane or something? Who thought this problem up? This is a, this is ridiculous. Anyways, what does f of four mean in the context of this problem? So f of four means the value when x equals four or t equals four. So it's in this case, remember this is f of x, this is our function. So it's the function value at the fourth minute so it's his distance we're gonna write that down his distance after four minutes f of four equals the distance after four minutes that's in context now what about f of x equals four okay that means that his distance equals four so that's what that means in context. So f of x, ooh, how are we going to write this? f of x equals 4 means the distance is equal to 4. So what would that be? I mean, if we had to solve for x, there's two places. Like here, f equals 2. And then you got to look at this one over here as well. Maybe like 14. But it doesn't ask you to do that. But that's basically it. So your homework, if we're looking at homework, all you got to do is just get really good about finding all these different areas, domain, range, and writing them down. And that's what it is. Good luck with it. This is Mr. Kelly in Kaiser Slaughter. And remember, it's nice to be important, more important to be nice. See you.